Hi guys, it's Alex from Wano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. I haven't done a spotlight in a long while and I especially haven't done a first impressions spotlight on a brand. I've had these samples for a while. They've been looking at me with all of their beautiful japanese -ness, and I'm gonna sniff them today. First impressions, have not tried them at all, but yeah, these ones come with flashcards. How exciting. Look, things. So the brand is called Mia Shinma. It might be Maya Shinma, I'm not sure. Japanese lady, born in Japan, but moved to Florence and discovered perfume and then moved to Paris, I believe. So it's Japanese influence with French influence as well. So it's a fusion of two things. I think, well, at least I feel like they are going to be completely natural, but I'm not sure. I'm going to read a little bit more. I just want to smell them and that's why I probably should have done a bit more research, but we can do it together as we go. Here you go. I will, of course, link her website below. Her website says, Obeying art, obeying nature. Seasons come and go. Flowers in all their glory burst upon us at the moment of their blooming. Life bathes in sunlight. From the eternal beauty of Mother Nature, from the memories and emotions evoked by her, are born Maya Shinma perfumes. The compositions are elaborated to highlight the charm of the original natural fragrance and the luxurious raw materials that are so generously used in Maya Shinma perfumes. It's the thematic simplicity of her creations we find the boundlessness of a work of art. I don't know what my expectations are. Whenever I think about Japanese perfume, or Japanese influenced at least, I think of elegant, simplistic, stripped back perfumes that have some kind of transparency to them. Um, simple compositions, things like that. So let me just quickly see how much our perfumes cost and then we'll start sniffing them. I have six, six of them to smell. Disclaimer, they were not sent to me by the brand. I was given these a long time ago. She does have sets of perfumes on her site where you can try them all out. She has the Heritage Collection. They are 180 euros. And they're 55 mils. Ooh, okay. Okay, didn't know that. She also has a collection called Kimono, which is this. Can you see this? Look at that lovely art. Oh, it's really nice, isn't it? So that's her Kimono collection. I don't know which ones I have. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're just gonna find out. They are 200 euros, also 55 mils. Then there's La de Maya Shinma. They are 150. Uh, and they're 100 mils, so kind of varied, but I just want to smell them. So I'm going to randomly just pull one of these out and we're going to see what it is. So this one is called Yuki. Let's find the flashcard. So it says Yuki. I'm trying to not get the light. And it also says La Neige. So from my experience and knowledge, Neige means snow. Is that right? Impression affable. So I don't really know what um, is in there. I'm gonna look that up after, but for now, let's smell it and see what it is. So if this is her impression of snow, let's see. Ooh, exciting. I love smelling new perfume. <laughs> oh, okay, it smells like lavender to me. I get mostly lavender from this. I'm gonna do that thing where I pass the blotter from left to right unintentionally and with no reason. It just happens when I smell things. It's very crisp and cool, so I guess that's where the snow part comes in. I was not expecting lavender though. I've just passed it again. Count how many times or take a shot every time I pass the blotter from left to right. Lavender's really all I can smell. I think I can maybe smell a white musk hidden in here as well. But yes, it's got a cooling effect on my senses and I like it. It's elegant, but just past the blotter, it's not mind blowing or anything to me. Yeah, it feels like a white musk lavender. I'm gonna look at what the notes are. It says hushed note, gracious impression, generous fragrance, soft and serene, beginning with a hint of lavender. I wouldn't say it's a hint. I would say it's a full on lavender. The softness of snow is found in the freshness of the top note, composed of abundant and subtle lavenders. So there's more than one lavender in here. 
So I wouldn't say that it's a hint of lavender when you've got more than one. Uh, and in full woody amber base note, a snow covered landscape, serene and luminous, also the image of a generous, humble, elegant being. This pleasing fragrance brings pleasure and a voluptuous of life. So this has, this is the actual notes, French lavender and Japanese lavender. I love that. I love that she is incorporating lavender from her part of the world. Uh, heart notes are jasmine and woody notes and the base note is vanilla, oak moss, amber and musk. I said musk. To me, I smell lavender and musk. We're going to move on to the next one. So this one's called Tsubaki. Beautiful names. I love it. Let's spray it and then I'll see what it's about. Tsubaki. This one. I wish the light would not do that. There you go. Sorry for the bad lighting, guys. This says Camellia. Okay, Tsubaki. So this one smells like oud. If not oud, a very crisp, <laughs> a very crisp woody note in here that feels somewhere in the realm of oud. Hmm. And again, something cool, like a possibly a cool aromatic note in here like mint or maybe anise or something like fennel so yeah it's mainly a cool woodiness i'm gonna i need to look up what this one is but it the impression of it to me is is oud and it feels cold kind of like the first one so this says beauty and seduction the soft notes floral and woody weave a modern shepra scent the key is Subaki, which is Camellia. Then you've got Jasmine, Patchouli and Oud Wood. The crimson petals of Subaki diffuse beauty and seduction. It's a Shepra. Top note, Saffron. Heart note, Subaki and Jasmine. And the base notes, Patchouli, Oud and Musk. This one, I don't know. This one, I don't know about. This one reminds me of some of the Agonist perfumes that I've tried before. There's a sweetness going on in it, which is very crisp as well. The oud is the main thing, and I don't feel like I'm smelling camellia or any type of floral. It's really about oud. Unfortunately, it's one of those things where the oud is all I can focus on. I'm gonna spray it on my skin to see what's going on. There's definitely a beauty to this perfume. There's something really elegant about it and it's very refined and the oud in it feels not one iota of dirtiness. But yeah, it, it's really all about the oud. I, maybe the florals will come out later, but that's all I can focus on for now. So we will revisit them, but for now I'm going to smell the third one. So this one's called Hannah. And it's in one of these little dudes. So I'm going to have to put it on my skin. So let's put it on while we read about it. It's going to go on my wrist, this one. I'm not wearing any perfume today in preparation for this video. So this one is Hannah La Fleur. It's this one here. Let's try to not have the light shine in your eyes, but that's it. Oh, this one feels vintage. Really, really vintage. Okay, Hannah which means flowers. Anyone that's a Japanese speaker that's watching this, I apologize if I'm butchering the beautiful language that you speak. It says the exhilaration of flowers, gentle remnants. Like human beings, the beauty of flowers is short lived. Well, that's quite sad, isn't it? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't like that. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. It's very transient is the reason why beauty exists. It's a poem that doesn't come from Maya herself, Mia. So the flower, symbol of fragility and beauty, an elegant bouquet of jasmine and rose, the graceful note of ylang ylang expresses the irresistible charm of the beauty of the moment hidden in a flower. The final note of iris, noble and distinguished, floral and fascinating. So this is rose essence, jasmine, rose absolute, ylang ylang, heliotrope, hinoki, patchouli iris and musk. Really what I smell here is musk more than anything and it's that vintage kind of dark musk smell that I'm getting it. That's why I said it smells vintage. It's not a white musk in here. I can really smell the roughness of jasmine. It doesn't smell like a super jasmine, but you know that little texture of rough jasmine that you get sometimes? 
This is really all about the musk, this one. So from the three perfumes I've tried, it seems that her style of perfumery is really showcasing one note. So far, the three that I've tried, I haven't been able to pick out anything I haven't I haven't seen a blend. It's not a negative. This is just her way of doing perfume. Every perfumer is different. And it, I'm not saying that I don't like it. I'm just saying that this one is the most multifaceted, where the other one was really oody, the other one was really lavendery. This one I can feel a bit more going on. It feels like dark musk, jasmine, and not so much of the rose iris. I don't really feel that. To me, it's like a dark musk jasmine and it reminds me of those perfumes like Quelque Fleur by Ubigon and those sort of vintage Caron sort of style perfumes, which is great. I like this. It definitely feels throwback. It feels like a 70s floral, but not as complicated as they are. So it's a little bit more stripped back, which is what I was expecting from somebody that comes from Japan. This one's my favorite so far. That musk though, that musk is definitely something to contend with. Hey, let's try the next one, which is called Foyage Vet. So let's put this on my other wrist. So this is called, is it green flowers? I like the sound of that already. <laughs> I can't get this back in. I really hate these samples with the wands. Seriously hate them. I might have to just fully wear this one today because that is not going back in. Oh, this one's cool. Okay, there you go. This is really unusual. This one has really surprised me. This has got, the greenery in here is not like a greenery I have tried. It feels like Asian cooking. It feels like sometimes when I, there's a really cool uh, Japanese food shop right near where I live. And when I walk in, this is what I smell. It's, it's an aromatic light greenness that feels like, not wasabi like, that would be strange, but something that is savory but herbal. Oh, it, I feel like when I read this note list, there's gonna be something that is never or not really used very often in perfumery, like Shizo or some, it's something like that. Let me read about it because this one is really interesting. Light though, again, elegant, crisp, this one, it's not heavy at all. Foyage Vert, the soft green of May, the green glow of sunlight through tree leaves. Hmm. Transparent green notes evoking fresh young leaves and nature. What is the word for sunlight filtering through leaves in Japanese? There's a perfume I know by Pierre Guillaume that is about that. Ah, oh, it's Komarebi. I think Komarebi is the word for light filtering through leaves. Anyway, side note. The combination of citrus, rosewood and bamboo paints a picture of soft green. The exotic hint of cardamom leads to the refinement of a more distant image. Floral green leaves sprouting in the soft light of May. So the notes are citrus, rosewood, bamboo, fresia, green leaves, cardamom. So it's cardamom, cedar and musk. I don't know. It doesn't feel... I wouldn't say it's cardamom, it's kind of... <sighs> this is going to sound crazy. There's a perfume by Bogue or Bogue called Delore, and the green part of that perfume, which is almost a little bit toothpaste-y, but sweet, feels like that's what this is, whole perfume is made out of. I wouldn't say it's leafy green, I would say it's aromatic green but there is a smoothness in here. Cardamom is such an interesting smell to me in perfume. It's, it's almost citrusy, but smooth green and sometimes a little bit like washing up liquid. <laughs> and that sounds bad, but it's not in here. This is a very meditative perfume. It's very calming and it's not a green that I've smelled before. So this one gets a thumbs up from me. I really like it. I'm gonna smell the last two. So this one's called Tsuki. 
We had Subaki and now we've got Su Suki. Let's put it on. Big amount on there for you guys, big amount. Oh, I think this is my second favorite so far. This one is fruity. There's a fruit in here that is something like a mango or a, definitely a tropical fruit in that realm. Possibly something like passion fruity mango-y. Possibly honey. And there's something in here that I cannot put my finger on that is killing me right now because I've smelled it before and it's sparking something in my brain. This one's fun. This one's quite fun. It's unique as well. I'm dying to know what's in this one. Let's see what Suki is. It's this one. Suki. Ah, oh, I can smell tuberose. Tuberose is revealing itself or some kind of very prominent white flower. I think it's tuberose. Tuberose with a peachy sort of peachy mango passion fruit. It smells like a porn star martini with tuberoses sitting in it. So I'm going to say passion fruit, but you never know. Let's see. Hmm. It says boundless feeling, the river of romance. And there's a little poem if you want me to read it. You told me you would come right away, but I waited for you during this endless moonlit night. So did I wait for the moon still glowing at dawn? A lovelorn heart languishing for love. I am waiting for you forever. It says the blue moon sets the heart vibrating and excites emotion for the loved one. Offers opalescent moonlight and the mystery of lovers. It's an oriental perfume. The scent of heliotrope and vanilla. Sandalwood and musk soft, on, soft and gentle on the skin. The romantic accord produced by simple elegant bamboo and sensual raspberry. Raspberry is draped by the soft mellow bass note. So it says the notes are bamboo. Raspberry, Rose Absolute, Jasmine, Tuba Rose, Sandwood, Heliotrope and Musk. So again, this is about a fruity Tuba Rose, but not that awful sweet cloying sweet Tuba Roses that you get on the market all the time now. I just can't stand them. Just stop with that. This is really cool. I like this one. I, d I will say I thought that th she was a completely natural brand and now that I've smelled them, I definitely don't feel like they are. Especially if you've got raspberry. I mean, raspberry, you don't distill them so it's not a natural note. But yeah, fruity, little bit rough textured again from that musk. It's got a touch of that muskiness that was in the, whichever one I said was like the vintage floral. I think it's Hannah. So it's got that. It doesn't smell like raspberry to me though. It smells more like a orange fruit, like a mango or uh, something like that. I don't know. And tuba roses. So that's what that one smells like. We're gonna move on to the last one. So this one is called Mizu. Or is it Mitsu? I don't know. Let's see if I've got the flashcard. The water. Let's see what it smells like. Oh, this is very bright. This is, this smells like verbena, lemon verbena or something lemongrassy related. And a little bit of greeny, but it feels mainly like lemongrass to me. There's aromatic going on and there's light wood going on as well. Just pass the blotter. <sighs> Do you want it? I'm fed up of passing it to my other hand. This one's nice. This one's simple, elegant. I have smelled this before. This one feels the most Japanese to me. This is what I expect Japanese perfumery to smell like. Non-offensive, fresh, clean sort of smell. And I mean, it's named after water, so what, what more do you expect? There is something a tiny bit smooth and creamy in here as well. This is really pleasant. This, this feels like if you've ever been to Muji, the shop. Do you know if you have Muji in your country, whoever's watching this? They always have their room aromatizers blowing out steam everywhere in the shop. And this is kind of like what a Muji shop smells like. So pure, like spring water, clear, transparent, citrusy flavor. Uh, sorry, flavor, she didn't say that, made it up. 
Citrusy fragrance, simple, pure, clear, like water from a spring. Lemon notes give the scent its purity. A woody, spicy note is superimposed and tells the story of a landscape where water gushes forth from a fountain. A perfume with hints of citrus, giving a pleasing sensation which lightens the heart and carries us back to the source. The notes are lemon, petit grain, honeysuckle, black pepper, coriander, cedar, and musk. So this is lovely. This is... This to me feels very aromatherapy slash perfume. It feels more like a mood enhancer as opposed to a full on perfume. But that's coming from someone that loves, you know, opulent, rich, spicy, resinous, exotic sort of smell. So this one isn't my favorite style, but if you like aromatic, um, it, it does feel like lemongrass rather than just lemon. Maybe that's the combination of the, the greenery or the aromatic going on with lemon. And it's very, very light, very light. So that's it, I've smelled them all and I had a great time doing it. Let's go over them. So this one is Yuki, the first one I tried with the lavender. Unfortunately for me, I, I still only really smell lavender. It's softened because lavender does, it softens when it's in a composition. It's, it's aromatic at first and then it, it mellows out a bit. That one for me is just lavendery, so I can take or leave that one. I mean, she has a lot more perfumes than the ones I've, I'm trying. This is just a snapshot of the brand. Subaki is the oud one. It's definitely softened as well. I can feel an almost fruity floral element going on as well, which I know is very vague but it's hard to pinpoint. It feels like pink flowers a little bit, but with a very prominent oud. This is the tuberose. Oh, tuberose fruity. That one is also softened. So all of them are softening as they dry. Nothing's getting sharper anywhere. This one I think is the most interesting, the green. The cardamom minty coolness, kind of nice. Foyage Vert, I really like that one. It's, it feels like it might have spearmint as well. Maybe not, there's not a note listed, but that's just how I feel. That vintage floral Hannah with the mask, that one's pretty cool. So the two that I like the most are Foyage Vert and Hannah. Great, I'm really glad that I got to try this brand. As always, I'll link um, her website below so you can go and check them out. They didn't send me them. I've just had them for a while and really wanted to try them. I would say, the brand touches on a lot of different things. You've got a, some, a classic floral in there, you've got aromatics, there's a citrus, uh, there's a fruity, so it is hitting on a lot of different things. They feel overall slightly transparent. I thought they were gonna be transparent and they kind of are. Not, not transparent meaning you can't smell them, but there is a clarity to them. There is a l effort kind of lightness to them. Even the oud one is not that heavy. So that's what I would expect from Japanese influenced perfumes. And I like that. I like that that's what happens. I like to experience perfumes from all different places and different people and different ideas and this brand is gonna be for you if you like niche smelling perfumes that aren't avant-garde and perfumes that are different, but rooted in French style with a Japanese twist. Anyway guys, I'm Achuamono, trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.